Hello, and thank you for joining me in this episode of Ask on Trisha. Today, I have a very, very special guest to me who's close and dear to my heart. I love her more than fish love water. Her name is Adrienne Lott, and she and I started over some of them some years ago at BET. She was a producer, I was a writer, and we were both from Texas. And I just knew I had found my female soulmate. <laughs> we think so much alike. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome my dear friend, Miss Adrienne Lott, who is also a breast cancer survivor. And she has a new children's book coming out soon, hopefully by the end of this year called Go to Bed Book, based on her crazy, <laughs> funny, cute, adorable daughter. Ladies and gentlemen, Here's Adrian. Hi, everybody. Thank you thank for having you. me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I am so hyped to have you as my first guest. And it just seems like we're starting over again with the first <laughs> because you were there when I got my first national writing job at BET and you just welcomed me with open arms. So I'm just so it's happy. full circle. Texas got to take care of Texas. Hello. Thank you. Thank you so <laughs> much. You know how we do. But um, I wanted to ask you, what is the best advice that you've ever given someone? The best advice that I feel like I've ever given someone is mainly when kids are going off to college after they graduate from high school, but it can really apply even as a teenager and young adults. I advise people to not loan anybody any money because I have learned through several tough lessons when you loan somebody money you may as well say you're giving them a gift because nine times out of ten you will not be repaid the loan that you gave out so that's mainly what I want to to say is my best advice and do not co-sign for anybody to purchase anything because you can get burned like that also yeah I agree, especially when you're young, because that's one thing I didn't learn. So I mm -hmm. left home, as you know, to come mm -hmm. to L.A. Right. And I really I really didn't have a, any aspirations to go into entertainment or show business. It was urged mm -hmm. on by family and friends. They're like, you've been doing this oh, all okay. your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I never moved here for that. People don't even know that. I just I didn't even know that. <laughs> I didn't even know that. I but like you, I was a little green when I moved and, you know, not really, I didn't even know what co-signing meant. And one of our former co-workers at BET asked me to co-sign for her to purchase a puppy. And because, I mean, I knew that I was co-signing because it was like she needed somebody to like, I guess, back up her payment plan, you know, um, but I knew what her salary was because I had seen paycheck stubs. I saw the car she drove. I saw the home that she lived in. I saw the clothes that she wore to work. She never missed work. So me co-signing for her to get the dog, I assumed it was because the dog was like an $1,100 dog at that time. And this was like in the early 2000s. The dog right. was $1,100. So for her to make a $100 payment every month, I didn't think it was a big deal. And I moved back home from L.A. in 2001. And I did not know until I went to apply for a Circuit City. They don't even think have Circuit City anymore. I applied for a Circuit City credit card and was denied the credit card. And when I called to question why, it was because the girl had apparently never paid not one monthly payment for the dog. Shut and so, up. yes. And so had the dog. They get, you know, when we co-signed, they gave her the dog. So, or when I co-signed for her. Uh, and this was somebody that I considered a friend at that time. But now wow. in hindsight, this was an associate and not a friend because a friend wouldn't do that. Um, so I didn't know that the girl never paid for the dog. And so it fell back on my credit report because I co-signed for the dog. A dog that I only saw that day that I co-signed, never babysat the dog or anything. So that was a hard lesson learned about co-signing, but the borrowing money, 
you know, like you think you're being nice to it could be family because I've loaned family money and not been repaid. So co-signing for things and loaning people money, you may as well look at it as you're taking on that responsibility completely. You're not going to get the money back and you may end up having to pay for whatever that was that you co-signed for. Right. You know, people have Mm -hmm. amnesia about all the things you've done for them. Not that you're Mm -hmm. looking for, uh, you know, repercussions or, you know, I hate having, you don't don't want to call nobody out on what you've done for them. That's just like really lame. But when you're dealing Mm -hmm. with family, you know, you have to sometimes go, uh, excuse me, you call them to the car. You're not going to help me. What? Mm-hmm. And you have to realize, uh, I want the audience and and, and people uh, mainly under 30, mm-hmm. You it takes a long time to get over that feeling. Yes. And when sometimes help- people don't do it intentionally because right. even as an adult, when I was 30, mm-hmm. I co-signed for my father to get a credit card. And God rest his soul, I love my father with all that I have in me. But my father passed away unexpectedly without paying that credit card off. And after his death, I was responsible for that credit card bill. So, I mean, that was unfortunate and it wasn't foreseen and it wasn't intentional like the dog was. But it was still, you know, I had to take on that responsibility. And then, you know, like we ended up selling his home in order to pay off, you know, some of the uh, debt that he left after he passed, you know, so that that got me out of it actually coming out of my pocket. But, you know, I wouldn't encourage everybody to, if you can keep the house, keep the house. You know what I'm saying? So you can have like a generational home, but, you know, things happen. You have to do what you have to do sometimes because Mm -hmm. you have a family now, you know, Mm -hmm. and you you have to do the best for you and your family. Mm -hmm. You know, like you say, he's dead and gone. Mm -hmm. And, 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 And we're stuck in the mm-hmm. end with what we have done and yes right it is our fault it's mm-hmm. our fault and i think that's the hardest pill to swallow because right you want you want to be that nice person that you are deep inside and help mm-hmm. people inspire people and mm-hmm. and on the flip side of that they don't care it's a blank wall right they only you want to treat people like they treat you but they don't treat right. you like you treat them mm-hmm. exactly exactly and it becomes one-sided and again mm-hmm. that's where the friction starts and then right. like me you you get you get bitter that's a good mm-hmm. word because i got bitter because i i sat here one day it, it was a while ago years ago and you know you start adding up all the money you've sent other people when you and it's like, a lot I could have put that, I would be here, I would be there, I could have, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. And not that um, people don't help you in return as well, but it's, it's the ungratefulness and it's the, the carelessness of some, like, I'm, I'm sitting here just baffled that you co-sign for a damn dog. I'm sorry. (laughs) A dog. (laughs) I probably should have ran it by you first before I did it. And then I would have never ended up in that situation. <laughs> Baby, let me tell you, I'd have found her ass a dog on the side of the street somewhere. And, and who pays for a dog? You know uh-huh. how many stray animals are around here and people paying all that money for a dog? Okay. I'm, I'm mad already. And it's 30 years I don't even later. Know dog, I want to know how long did the dog live? Like... Well, let's listen. put a. <laughs> I'm about to put a, <laughs> an alert out for the dog. I want to see <laughs> this dog. I want to know what's doing. In order to get the thing off of my credit, I still had to make a settlement deal with the creditors. You know, you know the the whoever she yeah. got, whatever Who pet store she now. got the dog from, they yeah. lost out. But, you know, I still had to pay the creditors a couple of hundred dollars to get that off of my credit. And thank goodness I didn't have to pay the whole 1100 But $11 was too much for me because it wasn't my dog. Right. And now, so I'm going to flip it and ask, what's the best advice someone has given you? I think the best advice that someone has given me is really simple, but it's so hard to do. And that is learn to tell people no. I have Ah. struggled with that because I'm like, 
you know, want to be nice and treat people like I want to be treated. I don't want anybody to tell me no. And that's probably why I don't tell people no. But as I've matured, you know, I'm I'm pushing 50 now. Now I'm at the point to where I don't feel bad about telling you no. Because when my plate is full, my plate is full. See, that's what you get for not hanging out with me more often. Because, you know, I know how to say, (laughs) hell no. Get out of my face. I don't have time for that BS today. You know, Mm -hmm. because in starting this channel, this newer channel, these new shows Mm -hmm. that I've been wanting to do, I've had about three or four people to call me. While I'm in here setting up lights, writing script, getting stuff together to my, oh, hi, can you help? No. Well, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Again, yeah, I should have busy. you. Yes. <laughs> so, and you know, like, they get I'm, shocked. Yeah. Right. Because they're not used to you saying no. But right. I, have, I, have, I have started telling people that they need to protect their peace. And I feel like me learning how to say no is me also protecting my peace. Right. Because I don't want to get stressed out doing stuff for you when I have things that I need to do for myself or like my husband or my daughter, my family. I don't have time to take care of you because I already have, you know, I'm, I have enough of my plate taking care of what I'm taking care of. So See, no, I learn to I, say no. I told you we think alike. You just said three words that I say in a different way. And I'm going to tell you, you said, protect my peace. And I say, I don't let anybody make me lose my sanity or mm-hmm. let me lose my sanity. You That's know, because right. it's the same thing. If you, mm-hmm. you don't have peace of mind and mm-hmm. you can't function for yourself, how are you going to do it for anybody else? First That's of correct. all. That is and correct. today, just today, I had to hang up on somebody because I'm like, wait a minute, I'm shooting. And like I tell you, it's always when I'm in the production mode that you, mm-hmm. I have these distractions. Girl, mm-hmm. I hit click so fast. I was like, I don't have time for that. I got to get ready to talk to Adrian. That's right. And it was something funny that happened after work today. Uh, I'm a counselor at the elementary campus and children have learned to protect their peace very well. And we can take mm-hmm. note from them because in this day of the virtual classroom and these kids yep. are attending their classes on zoom. Yeah. There have been teachers who have been like, you know, if the kid is unruly on the other side of the screen at their home, not paying attention, not staying on task. And the teacher starts getting on the kid. The kid has learned to cut the zoom off. They will click to get out of the zoom, leave. They know how to do that. So the, if the children can protect their peace, I need to know do the same thing learn how to say no and protect my peace i was talking with someone uh yesterday like i said it's hard when family does things to you and you feel isolated Mm -hmm. and you feel alone and she was telling me how she had to do this and that and was drinking this and popping pill that i was like hold up hold up Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. we rebuke all that girl you need to not let people make you lose your sanity because they don't care in the end why mm-hmm. they making you go crazy? They over there eating pizza, That's drinking right. this, you know, popping popcorn while you That's over right. here crying. Mm-hmm. You crying your heart out, and they over there sleep with a smile. Don't on even their care. Face. Don't you even hadn't care. even thought about it. Don't even care to think about it. So right. I, I I'm glad I learned that at an age, early age. Well, it, it took me a while, but I got it now. I yeah. got it now. But that's that's the good thing. Long as you get it. See, that's what people right. don't understand. We we learn lessons over and over and over in our lives. Mm-hmm. And I know I do. And and sometimes it'll click the first time, but other times it may take you a few few seasons to realize mm-hmm. it. But now I'm like you. The answer is no. I I just told the girl. I said I'm working on myself right now. Because I was highly disappointed in my laziness during this pandemic and enjoyed every kind of food under the sun and slept in my nice new bed and I did not work out. And now I look like what I don't want to look like. So now I have to start over. But Mm -hmm. again, that's my fault. You know, we have to learn lessons over and over again. And now I have to learn not to even talk about it, to just do Mm -hmm. it. Do it. Yeah. And you did it before, so you know you could do it again. Exactly. You just really, I, I might be still in that, Adrian. <laughs> hey, you can have it. You my girl. You can have what's mine Protect is yours. Protect 
my peace at all times. I love that. That's like a I don't, I don't that even on a know t-shirt. where I heard that from. I don't even it's know where good. I heard that from. That is good. And that's what the truth. we must do. Protect right. your peace. You have to. You have to. But I am going to kiss and hug you the next time I see you <laughs> when I'm down there in Texas. Yeah. I'm going to come down there and meet your husband because we got a lot to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. It has been a pleasure. Anything for you? (laughs) And the same, you know, because, you know, I I love you more than air. You know, it's just, (laughs) I love you too. And I'm looking forward to your book again, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be waiting for her (laughs) children's book off of her, uh, based on her brilliant family called Go to Bed Bug. I've yes, seen ma'am. the artwork. It's just adorable. I'm so excited. Thank you. And, I too. and I'm going to keep staying on you and you stay on me for us to get all our creative juices out while we still right. alive. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Hold each other accountable. That's right. That's the kind of friends and family. Well, it has need. truly been a pleasure. It has been a pleasure. Thank you for having Thank me. Thank you. And thank you again. I'll talk to you later. Thank you all for joining me today. Have a good evening.